Hello and welcome everyone uh, to another session of Team FRCR2B Viva Practice Session. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, today, I'm again thankful to the set of volunteers we have. Um, uh, so without you know, wasting any more time, uh, let's give the screen to Dr. Sayan. You can uh, share your screen and Dr. Anil would be uh, on the hot seat. Yeah, can I hear, am I audible? Hello? Yes, you are audible. Uh, you have, okay. still have to share your screen. Yes, yes, yes. One hi, minute. Hi, 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 yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can hear you. One minute, I'll just try to share my screen. Hello? Yes. Yeah, I don't know, where is this thing, something? The screen is in front of me, but where is the Zoom? Uh, you'll have to come back to the Zoom um, app and share the screen. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Yeah. I'm not able to get the Zoom app, so. Yeah, okay. Share screen. Someone the share screen option, this thing is not showing. Mm. Um, it should. I know. You are the co-host, right? Yeah, I am the co-host, I am the co-host. Um, uh, one minute. Yes, it, it, it is starting. Yeah. It is starting? Yes, okay, you can okay. see a blank screen. Yes, yes. Okay. So I think you will be able to... Are you seeing it now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Your yeah. time starts now. Yes. This is a 30-year-old man presenting his seizures. Uh, yes, these are the axial plane uh, CT images of brain or the yes. level of uh, uh, basal ganglia. Anil you, Anil, you have the remote control, okay? You can okay. scroll if you Okay. Okay. Uh, again, the most striking abnormality is uh, uh, hyperdensity in the region of left cellular fissure with associated hyperdensity in the left uh, temporal lobe and the uh, left uh, external capsule and frontal region. So uh, okay. with this uh, uh, findings, uh, the hyperdensity in the left cellular fissure could be uh, sub subarachnoid hemorrhage and uh, uh, causing uh, uh, subsequent uh, uh, subsequent ischemia of adjacent uh, uh, left temporal and uh, uh, capsular ganglion effusion. Or the other possibility would be uh, 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 vasculitis, some form of vasculitis, and then causing uh, 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 secondary in infarction of the acute infarction of the left temporal and uh, frontal lobes. So with these findings, I would like to discuss the uh, clinical details with the uh, referring physician. And uh, further, I need to take the case with the uh, diffusion, uh, diffusion weighted uh, MRI sequence for uh, further characterization of, characterization of the same. So actually, uh, what, do you remember the history of the patient? Yeah, seizures. He presented seizures. seizures. So you're thinking of the possibility, I mean, what is the principal diagnosis? Uh, the one possibility will be uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage in the left uh, cilium fissure. Due uh, to? Or uh, some kind of vasculitis. Okay. Vasculitis uh, causing secondary infarction or maybe uh, uh, meningitis also a possibility. Uh, okay. I would like to know the uh, patient clinical history, whether he has any fever or... Uh, yeah, uh, he has he has fever. Yeah, in, in case of fever, that uh, diagnosis go with in favor of uh, infective meningitis. So I would like to uh, take the case further with the uh, uh, MR with contrast study. Okay, so is, is hemorrhage common in meningitis? Uh, no, these are the uh, inspected uh, secretions or the uh, inflammatory exudates which appear ex hyperdense on plain CTs. Okay, so you want an MRI, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, these are the uh, multi-sequential uh, axial MR images of the same patient. So uh, I would like Any, to see you, the- You can control your screen, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to see the diffusion weighted image first. 
so mm-hmm. this shows the uh, corresponding hypertension theory showing uh, diffusion restriction suggestive of uh, 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 infarction and uh, mm-hmm. uh, this the flare image corresponding flare image shows uh, uh, inflammation of the same so okay. uh, there is diffuse uh, gyral uh, inflammation and uh, white uh, white matter edema so i okay. would uh, reconsider reconsider the diagnosis uh, in mm-hmm. favor of uh, uh, infective uh, infective etiology like herpes encephalitis so okay. this could be uh, my first primary uh, diagnosis and okay. uh, differential diagnosis will be limbic encephalitis so i would yeah. like to uh, 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 know the uh, as i know patient is having fever so i would mm. like to know the source of infection like uh, 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 herpes uh, simplex virus by uh, serum uh, mm, serum uh, virological studies so uh, which which part will you examine by the virological study like what will you examine uh, for the viral markers uh, uh, from from where basically uh, from the uh, blood only uh, serum okay anything any other type of fluid you want to examine csf csf sorry csf okay okay fine we'll move to the next hmm. next yeah, this is a 85 year old male uh, present with acute right sided hemiparesis hmm i think you can still control the screen yeah uh, these are the axial non contrast and ct uh, images of the okay. uh, 85 year old male presenting with uh, acute right sided hemiparesis uh, the most striking abnormality is the band shape of hypodensity in the left uh, aca territory involving the left frontal and uh, parietal lobes corresponding with a subacute infarct in the left aca territory so mm-hmm. uh, rest of the brain parenchyma shows uh, age related uh, uh, age related atrophy and uh, white matter ischemic changes i would uh, immediately inform these findings to uh, my uh, emergency team or the referring clinician uh, for uh, any uh, possible salvage of the uh, ischemic brain Okay. So you want to do any investigation before that? Uh, uh, any any no, it's fine. I'm just saying like do you want to see any other investigation or do any other investigation or you just directly inform the neurologist or neurologist for that matter? Uh yes sir. Uh, yeah, Hello? I will just uh, yeah. yeah, I will just in, uh, inform the uh, uh, emergency TAR team regarding the uh, findings and uh, uh Uh, findings and take the f- case further with the uh, uh, MRI study if possible. Okay, fine. Huh. So this is a seventy-year-old male, uh, presenting with decreased attention, uh, attention with uh, Parkinson symptoms. Huh. Uh, okay. So these are the uh, these are the uh, axial. Uh, Uh, multi sequential mri images of the brain and uh, of a 70 year old man uh, brain presenting with uh, parkinson uh, like symptoms so um, the most striking abnormality is the hypertens uh, bilateral symmetrical t1 hyperintensities of uh, bilateral basal ganglia uh, the mainly mm-hmm. the globus pallidi uh, okay so th- there is no evidence of restricted diffusion or any volume loss so these could be uh, uh, changes due to uh, deposition of uh, uh, definition deposition of mang- uh, manganese manganese mineral in the basal ganglia uh, secondary to uh, uh, any hepatic changes like uh, hepatic cirrhosis or uh, uh, um, cld uh, liver failure so i would like to do uh, ultrasonography of abdomen uh, hmm. to see the uh, status of liver uh, and uh, inform my findings to the uh, clini- uh, referring uh, uh, physician or clinician and to uh, discuss the find and uh, further management of the patient Okay, so instead of that, there was a CT done. Okay, yeah, and the CT uh, uh, selected images of the upper abdomen in the plain study shows uh, uh, cirrhotic changes of the liver with volume loss and caudate hypertrophy. So these uh, my findings in the brain correspond uh, confirms the uh, changes due to uh, liver cirrhosis. Okay, so next step, what will you do? You need from the findings to uh, the uh, liver team and also the neurologist. Okay. so this hmm. is a 7 year old male with focal convulsions hmm. uh, this is the axial uh, and sagittal uh, ct images of brain of a 7 uh, year old boy presenting with uh, seizures 
so the most striking abnormality is uh, the uh, uh, hypodensity involving the bilateral parietal lobes in peri uh, peri ventricular white matter peri ventricular white matter uh, sparing the subcortical view uh, subcortical uh, view fibers so with this uh, findings i will suspect a diagnosis of uh, x linked uh, uh, adeno leukodystrophy so i would like to know the history of uh, uh, patient and uh, detailed history of the patient from the clinician and to confirm the uh, findings i will go for uh, uh, either ultrasound abdomen or uh, uh, mri scan of the abdomen to look for the adrenal gland how will the adrenal gland change uh, as it's related to uh, 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 x linked uh, uh, adrenal leukodystrophy maybe uh, mm-hmm. the changes shrunk in size or any calcifications or any uh, or any lesions involving the adrenals is that a very common association uh, you will yes. want to look at the adrenal glands next or do you want to do some study on the brain itself yeah uh, mri brain is also uh, uh, the next investigation mm-hmm. okay so uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, selected images of the uh, mri brain with post contrast study shows uh, uh, can i have a t1 yeah yeah, yeah yeah yours yeah yeah you are yeah yeah uh, so i can see peripheral ring enhancing uh, uh, ring enhancing abnormality of the uh, the same abnormality seen in the ct brain so shows uh, mm, no significant restricted diffusion is seen on diffusion weighted image increased signal intensity on t1 and t2 and flare images so these findings uh, confirm the uh, confirm my diagnosis of uh, uh, x linked adrenal leukodystrophy so other type of diagnosis of other type of leukodystrophy also considered and uh, i will convey my, fi- my findings to the uh, um, uh, referring clinician and uh, i will discuss the case with neurologist and uh, pediatricians for the further management okay So this is a 30 year old male uh, uh, apart from vomiting and seizures no other uh, specific history was provided by the patient take care taker or the referring physician okay uh, sorry i need to know the age of the patient this one minute yeah it's a can you make it out from the image yeah uh, this is a young uh, baby uh, hmm. it's less than a uh, year it's a uh, neonate so the most striking up, uh, these are the axial sections of the uh, uh, brain uh, of a uh, neonate the most striking abnormality is the subarachnoid hem- uh, subdural hemorrhage involving the left uh, cerebral hemisphere with fluid fluid levels and also i can see uh, uh, intra uh, left parietal lobe hematoma with perilesian edema so i would like to know the uh, uh, history of the uh, patient uh, there was actually as mentioned so the parents were not giving any proper history to the clinician okay. and uh, they just came with a swollen you know swollen head and the ct was done yeah in this uh, baby uh, with a engage uh, in a sub- subdural hemorrhage and intraparenchymal hemorrhage i suspect mm. non accidental injury in this baby so i would uh, uh, like to do a skeletal survey of the baby to see uh, the uh, metaphyseal corner fracture or spiral fracture or rib fractures so mm-hmm. i with the patient is in the hospital i would make sure that patient uh, the baby won't leave the hospital and inform the uh, uh, social service and also the uh, referring senior pa- pediatrician so and uh, after skeletal survey that has to be read by two uh, separate uh, uh separately by two uh, pediatric uh, radiologist to confirm mm-hmm. the uh, same is a ct mandatory for all children no of CT, one, CT. one year one year and un- under one year age it is mandatory and for if it is more than one year then uh that also we can consider uh, up to two years uh, we can consider uh, getting a ct brain in case in a suspected case of non accidental injury okay there was no history for this patient okay uh, these are the uh, selected images of uh, sagittal t1 t2 and star images axial t2 images so the spine uh, shows multiple uh, schwann's node the vertebrae mm-hmm. appear normal signal 
So okay. it looks to know the uh, chord in the T2 sagittal. Okay. Okay. So I can make out a thin indentation of the dorsal chord uh, posteriorly. Okay. Uh, so I would like to confirm the same in the axial section. Yeah, I can confirm the same indentation in the axial section at the, okay. at the level of uh, at the level of D4 vertebra. Okay. So, uh, these findings will uh, uh, suggest of uh, uh, either arachnoid web or uh, benign dorsal cord herniation. Mm -hmm. This is a benign. This is a benign entity. If the patient is uh, uh, so, I would like to uh, I convey my findings to the referring clinician. And li I like to know the history of the uh, patient. So, uh, this uh, uh, as it is a benign entity, uh, no further, uh, 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 no further. Is there, a, is, there, is there a specific name for this sign? If uh, like the scalpel, scalpel. Uh, sign. Yes. This is a two-year-old male, uh, dysmorphic. Uh, this is the, uh, the frontal projection of the uh, uh, skull of a two-year-old boy, dysmorphic boy. So what can I see is the uh, enlarged skull. The cranial vault is enlarged. So mm -hmm. in the sagittal plane, I can see the uh, enlarged uh, uh, cranial vault with the narrow uh, skull base. And mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the lateral uh, uh, dorsal lumbar spine shows... Uh, anterior peaking of the vertebral bodies and uh, exaggerated uh, lordosis of lumbar spine. Okay. So, uh, uh, X-ray uh, pelvis shows uh, champagne-shaped uh, pelvic iliac, uh, squaring of iliac uh, blades and champagne-shaped pelvis. The uh, X-ray of the hand, left hand, uh, shows the uh, shortening of the left humerus and short uh, stubby bones. And the, uh, the finger uh, metacarpals also appear uh, uh, short. So with the collective of uh, these findings, I would like to uh, go with the uh, diagnosis of uh, achondroplasia uh, in a patient, in a young patient with the dysmorphic face. So I will convey my findings to the uh, referring clinician and uh, regarding the findings. And, uh, and the Sayan, just to yes. let you know that 15 minutes are up, you can wrap up the case. Okay, yes. okay. Okay, fine. So, Anil, I think, yeah, we have to finish. I think it was good. I mean, overall, it was very good. So, this was obviously a case of achondroplasia, as you were saying. Uh, apart from that, I'll just go through the previous cases uh, very fast. I think you have made the diagnosis in all the cases. This was a case of dorsal arachnoid web, as you correctly mentioned. There is a ventral, sorry, this was a case of cord, cord herniation, not arachnoid web. The DD was arachnoid web. As you correctly mentioned, there was an indentation on the spinal cord. Uh, in the thecal aspect and you picked up the finding very well then going back to the previous case i think we did quite a few cases uh, yeah so next case was that of focal conversion where yeah this was the case of uh, excellent adrenal equidystrophy which you have already picked up yeah i, I don't uh, i don't think you need to mention the adrenals as such because this can be diagnosed from uh, ct or mri only and as you correctly told, we'll inform the inform the pediatrician, go for family history and suggest pediatric neurological workup for this patient. And sometimes they may ask you the enzymes and all so that you can just look up and what are the other types of leukodystrophies. Uh, if they can ask you like what is, uh, what is the difference between the different types and uh, how is the MR spectroscopy picture different in few of them. Those if you can just see if in case they ask you in the exam, otherwise it was okay. And then this patient uh, decreased attention with Parkinsonism. Yeah, this was very good. You picked it up in the first slide itself. This was a case of hepatocerebral degeneration. You didn't need the CT for the diagnosis. You diagnosed it on the MRI only. So T1 hyperintensity, imbecile ganglia will be some characteristic few things. As you said, manganese deposition, hepatocerebral degeneration, Wilson's disease, any mineral deposition, so or total parental nutrition. Uh, these causes should be kept in mind because T1 hyperintensity is not that common. And whenever we see that, we should keep in mind mineral deposition diseases. So this was very good. You picked up the correct finding and you interpreted also very well in the first slide only. Then this was right. Yeah, this was again uh, ACA. As you said, it was ACA. What I wanted you to ask was the 
uh, NGO whether it is needed or not, uh, but it's okay. Uh, management. Uh, that's okay. yeah, management part. This uh, I think it was the first case, so you were a bit uh, this thing uh, nervous initially, but it was okay. In the MRI, you ultimately came to the correct diagnosis. It was herpes encephalitis. So we'll go for a CSA workup and make sure there is no other focusive infection. And differential, as you told, can be autoimmune uh, paraneoplastic syndrome. Limbic. 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 But yeah, the difference is that that will be symmetrical. This is asymmetric. So uh, that is one point you can say that this, this is uh, herpes encephalitis is initially asymmetric. Later it may become symmetric, but uh, you, uh, autoimmune limbic is always mostly most of the times it is symmetrical. So this case was completely asymmetric. There was no involvement on the right side. So this was herpes infix. That's it. I think I think you did very well. You did uh, more than five or six cases, and your diagnosis was correct in I think almost all of them. So that was very good. Yeah, that's Dr. true, uh, Dr. Anil. Welcome. Uh, it was a uh, it was your first session with us, and it was yes, a very yes. good yeah. hot seat session. Uh, so uh, thank you for participating, thank um, you, uh, thank Dr. You. Um, Sayan and Dr. Anil. Yeah, sure, if you sure. could, yeah, if you could stop sharing. Next, sure, Dr. Sure. Vijaya, you would be the examiner, and Dr. Rashida, you would be the hot seat. Um, if any of the co-hosts have any comments to make, they can make it while we are doing the change. Okay. Dr. Vijay, you have to show your screen now. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, I can see the screen now, hello. Oh, hi. Um, so this is a three-year-old male with short stature. I won't be able to take control of the screen, so you can scroll for me, please. So these are MR images of the brain of this patient. Uh, these are T1 XL images. Can you please scroll for me? Dr. Vijaya, you will have to scroll. Thank you. Okay. So these are the T2 XL images. And I'm still trying to look for the abnormality in this patient. Short stature. Okay. Uh, this... Want any particular sequence? You can just ask me. Okay. Uh, this is a T2 sequence, and this patient um, demonstrates a large um, skull. Can you keep scrolling, please? Uh, there is also hydrocephalus. And the pons appears um, hypo intense. Uh, I do not see any tonsillar hernation. Uh, can I see the flare, please? I can't really see any striking parenchymal abnormality. Okay, have a look at the coronal images as well. Okay. Apart from the large skull and the hydrocephalus, I'm yet to really pick any, any striking abnormality here. Okay, uh, you remember the uh, history I told you, right? It's just a short stature. Three year old, it's short stature. Uh, do you get any hint in the uh, sagittal situated images? Okay, can I look at the cervical spine again, please? Uh, the cord appears, um, the signal of the cord appears quite the high. Cord is, co uh, cord is fine. Oh, the cord is fine. But I don't see any tonsillar herniation. 
And can I look can I look at the region of the aqueduct? Because the fourth ventricle appears normal. There is possible um, aqueductal stenosis in this patient explaining the hydrocephalus. Uh, uh. Actually, you, you are seeing a uh, flow void in the region of aqueduct, which uh, again uh, says that it's normal. Okay. And I see that the, cal the corpus callosum is normal. Uh, the, okay, the posterior fossa looks quite small. So, but I do not see, like I said earlier, I do not really see any transillar herniation. So, I don't think this patient has a care malformation. And other possibilities in this child with a large skull could be a chondroplasia. So I would want to review other images of the of the um, limbs and spine to see if that would be suggestive. I would also want to correlate with the clinical history to see how this patient looks normally since this patient has a short stature. So I would want to confirm that by doing the x-rays of the limbs to look for any rhizomalia to confirm the suspicions. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to the next case. Okay. I think this was strict in the last case. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> you can uh, go ahead and try you to... You can go through this really fast. <laughs> okay, so this is... Um, um, these are multiple images of a child and this skull um, x-ray shows an enlarged skull uh, on this frontal view and the lateral view also shows the same. There is a um, craniofacial disproportion. Uh, these are such um, lateral views of the thoracolumbar spine and it demonstrates um, exaggerated lumbar lordosis. Um, some of this uh, vertebral bodies also demonstrates um, central beaking anteriorly. Uh, the images of the chests demonstrate um, uh, there is normal cardiomedestinal contour. The bones, the ribs, are uh, slightly broad in shape. Um, otherwise, I do not see any other significant abnormality on this okay, video. You can go to the abdominal pelvis. So this is the um, abdominal x-ray of this patient and it demonstrates a narrowing of the interpeduncular distance um, as we go um, inferiorly. Uh, this patient also demonstrates the square-shaped iliac, iliac wings as given the champagne um, glass appearance of the pelvis. Uh, there is also broad metaphysis of the proximal femora bilaterally. And X-ray of the upper limb demonstrates a rhizomelic, rhizomelic shortening of the humerus with um, broad stubby metacarpals as well as phalanges. And the X-ray frontal um, AP radiograph of the lower limb also demonstrates rhizomelic shortening of the femur with uh, broad um, metaphysial flaring as well as the inverted V-shape of the uh, distal metaphysis of the femur. So yeah, all can you conclude the case? Yeah. So all these are in keeping with them. Um, so 20 year old female with infertility. So this is a lateral view of the skull of this 20 year old female with infertility. Uh, I can see that um, there is widening of the cella of this patient. Uh, there is also thickening of the, um, of the inner and outer tables of the skull. Uh, this also uh, actually also demonstrates the um, enlargement of the maxillary sinus, as well as enlargement of the jaw um, with possible mild prognatism. Uh, findings are suggestive of um, acromegaly in this patient, and I would want to further evaluate this with an MR of the pituitary gland to evaluate the pituitary gland for any micro or macro adenomas to explain the patient's presentation of infertility. Uh, okay. I also want to- Can you comment um, on the uh, X-ray of 
calcarian or uh, okay. and these are the lateral views of the calcaneum of the um, bilateral and it demonstrates increased uh, soft tissue sickness of the uh, plantar um, of the plantar tissue and these are all such a, these are all in keeping with um these are all features of um acromegaly so i would want to refer this patient to the endocrinology team um for further management as well as discussion in the endocrinology MDT. Okay, what do you expect in the uh, lateral X-ray of spine? Since the diagnosis of acromegaly is correct. Uh, in the lateral X-ray of the spine, I do not really have any specific features in mind, but on this um, lateral X-ray, I see that there is uh, some. Uh, central depression inferiorly of the of some of the cervical vertebrae and the uh apart from that i don't really see any other. okay there is some no i think it's increased soft tissue anterior to the upper cervical vertebrae which is not supposed to be as wide as this aside that i do not see any other obvious abnormality here yeah, right. There is central posterior widening. Okay, okay. we'll go to the next case. Okay. So this is a 65-year-old female, recurrent bilateral sciatica, history of lumbar spine surgery. So this is a sagittal T2-weighted um, MR of the spine. And I see some, um, the, there is desiccation of the L5 S1 as well as L5 L5 um, intervertebral discs. I do not see any significant protrusion with or narrowing of the spinal canal. There is um, increased signal adjacent to the L5 S1 disc uh, anteriorly in the adjacent. Yeah, that, that is just degenerative changes. Sorry? Uh, that is part of degeneration, degenerative yes. uh, spine. Okay. You can neglect that finding. Okay. Um, can I look at the axials? Yeah, sure. So this patient has had previous surgery and is now presenting with bilateral sciatica. I see evidence of um, previous surgery in the posterior spine. And yeah. Um, there is mild narrowing of the, there is moderate narrowing of the um, uh, neural foramina bilaterally at the level of one of this uh, lower lumbar um, vertebrae, but I can't really tell the exact level at this point. But I do not see any compression of any exiting nerves. Uh, there is, uh, I don't have other um, images like a stair image to, to see anything. Can you scroll uh, on the stair at all again? Yeah, um, there is no neuroforamen narrowing and also uh, there is no uh, canal stenosis to cause uh, corda compression. So uh, do you see anything else that can account for her pain? Uh, I see that the posterior tissues, I see an increased intensity in the posterior tissues at the level of the uh, posterior to the sacral uh, spinous processes, but it's not very, uh, it's not very clear cut really. I would uh, love to see other sequences. No, the patient has, uh, remember the history, right? The patient is yes, uh, having... Okay. Yeah. A local cause in the posterior uh, lower back will not explain sciatica. No, I can't. I can't see the cause on this. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. We'll come back to this later. We'll come back. But five-year-old male, known case of Addison's disease, presented with spastic gait and hyperreflexia.
So this is, a, um, this is an XLT2 weighted MR of the brain. And I can see um, high intense, um, high signal intensities in the periventricular white matter around the occipital horns, as well as in the parietal lobe. Can I see all the sequences, please? Okay, flare, flare so, action. Yeah, similar, similar findings also in the flare flare sequence. I do not see any mass lesions or yeah. making a shift. And this is the sagittal T2 sequence of the spine. And there is a diffuse, um, mildly increased signal of the spinal cord. However, there is no cord expansion or any spinal canal narrowing. And this cord appears to, to be narrowed sort of inferiorly as if there is some degree of atrophy. Uh, I do not see any intraspinal, as in, I do not see any mass lesions in the spinal canal or any evidence of compression. Yeah, you have picked up almost all the findings. Can you uh, conclude? Uh, I think this patient is having some degree of atrophy of the spinal cord. Yeah. And so the history is that of Addison's and um, yeah, and possibly some inflammatory uh, changes in the deep white matter in the periventricular regions, probably as a result of the Addison's. Okay, very good to the next case. Uh, Dr. Vijaya, the 15 minutes are up, so I think you can summarize now. <laughs> yeah, the cases were a bit difficult. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> Okay. It's good okay. to have tough cases now, you know. We will remember that. Yeah, yeah but she did. She did pretty well, you know. Uh, yes. She picked up almost all the findings. And uh, okay, so the first uh, case, Addison's. Uh, the history is actually uh, the main hint to us the diagnosis. You have picked up all the findings, like uh, the diagnosis. Have picked up. Yeah, T2 flare hyperintensity uh, involving the parietal and occipital white matter. And also the atrophy of the cord. Okay. So uh, with the history of Addison's disease, this is the adrenoleukodystrophy and actually wow. can be associated with the spinal cord atrophy as well. Okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is actually a very difficult case. Um, like uh, you have picked up the most uh, important finding that is there is a history of previous surgery because we are seeing laminectomy at L5 level. And actually um, in the within the fecal sac, you are not seeing the corda nerve roots. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. There is paucity of uh, nerve roots here. And and these nerve roots, if you see at yeah. the most image, you can see the nerve roots are kind of uh, oh, sticking, onto the, yeah, hmm. sticking onto the fecal sac. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the case of adhesive arachnoiditis. Oh, okay. And you can suspect this uh, since you have uh, picked up the uh, finding of L5 laminectomy. Hmm. Okay, and that's a goal sock. Interesting. Yeah, this uh, you did pretty well. Uh, the X-ray you described, uh, uh, your description is really good, and also, and the heel pad thickness is increased, and uh, in the spine, it's just the uh, uh, enlarged anterior posterior diameter of the vertebrae. Mm -hmm. okay. So this uh, all in keeping with uh, diagnosis of acromegaly. And again, this case is a typical uh, case of achondroplasia, and you have described all the findings really well. Yeah. 
yeah even this case actually uh, the findings you have described uh, all the findings you have picked up that's a, a last skull then um, ventricular megaly and uh, okay and there is some uh, stenosis at the level of foramen magnum oh, okay so only, that's only finding yeah. actually uh, that you are it to pick up right <laughs> So yeah. that's just a diagnosis of achondroplasia. Okay. okay. This actually threw me off balance because I was I couldn't really find anything significant really. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I think so Sabah, uh, yes. Uh, stop sharing. Yes, please. Thank you, Dr. Vijaya, and thank you, Dr. Rashida, for a very good uh, session. Uh, next would be Dr. Asad, and our hot seat candidate would be. Um, Dr. Saneej. Okay. Leo? Yes, Dr. Asit, we can hear you. Yes, okay. So I need to share screen, yeah? Yes. <clears throat> okay, we can start. Uh, yes, it's sharing, yes. Okay, uh, your time starts now. So 20 year old male presented with the headache for two days. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I don't know how to share this. Yeah. You okay, want to give the remote option? Yeah, I will approve. Yeah, he, he, he gave, I think. Oh. He gave. Yeah, that's been given. Great. So I've been given a plain. Uh, CT, axial CT of brain. So I'm uh, trying to scroll it. Sorry. Uh, so um, I'm going from above downwards, uh, systematically reviewing the images, uh, where I'm seeing the sulca, sulci at the frontal parietal regions. Mm -hmm. uh, so this patient with the headache, uh, I'm looking for any intracranial space occupying lesions, any brain edema. I'm also looking for any extraxial or intraxial hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, now at the region of basal ganglia, I'm looking at the uh, deep gray matter, the ventricles. Uh, I can see some hyperdensity at the region of uh, internal cerebral veins. I'm, I just, I am, again, I'm looking there is some hyperdensity at the internal cerebral vein. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know whether it is significant, maybe, uh, uh, but I'm not seeing any hypodensity uh, in the corresponding thalami. Okay. So I'm also looking at uh, uh, frontal, frontal lobes, the temporal lobes. There are some uh, artifacts there. Uh, I'm not seeing any specific findings. Just to ignore that. Just concentrate okay. on your finding which you have picked up. So um, I'm seeing some hyperdensity at the region of internal cerebral vein. So in a patient, in a young patient with a uh, hyper, uh, headache, we have, to, we have to think the possibility of any uh, cerebral venous thrombosis, uh, especially if this patient has any uh, background history of any dehydration or any other. So uh, what would you like to do next? So I will inform this is a referring clinician it's, as it is an emergency. And uh, mm -hmm. so if the patient is stable uh, and I will uh, ask him to do a MR, a brain with MR venogram. Okay. So, so I've been given uh, axial T1 image uh, of brain. Uh, can you scroll? scroll? Yeah, I'm trying to scroll, it's very slow. Yeah. So uh, I'm again looking at uh, it systematically from below upwards. Mm -hmm. The posterior fossa, the temporal lobes. So I'm specifically concentrating on the uh, area which I I saw. Mm -hmm. So in the T1 images, I cannot see any uh, hyper intensity there. Right. Can you go to flare then? Okay. Um, sorry, I think there is some issue with my internet. Uh, so in the coronal uh, flare images, I'm mm -hmm. looking for any abnormal T2 hyperintensity or any uh, focal increased signal, uh, the frontal lobes, the temporal lobes. 
uh, and I'm also looking at uh, at the region of vein. I can see some uh, hyperintensity there um, at the region of uh, um, internal cerebral vein and also uh, hyperintensity at the region of uh, I'm not seeing it. I can't remember the exact location name. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, no so it, it's, it's suggestive of uh, um, ischemia or infarct. So I will look at the in my normal practice. I look at the coro uh, MRV images to confirm my diagnosis. You have the MRV. Okay. So uh, in the MRV, uh, I'm looking at the um, superior sagittal sinus. So I cannot see the inferior sagittal sinus, the mm -hmm. internal cerebral vein, and also. Uh, uh, that, that is suggestive of a, a cerebral venous thrombosis, so it's an emergency. I can also, I, I, I'm also not able to see the uh, uh, transverse sinus on um, right left side. So, uh, if, uh, in is summary, this the right say, side? Uh, sorry. Yeah, this is the right side. Right so, side okay, so how, uh, what would you do next? Yeah, uh, in summary, it's a cerebral venous thrombosis with uh, signs of uh, ischemia. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll inform this to the referring clinician and this patient needs to be referred to the neurology and uh, immediate uh, management is needed. So I will uh, directly inform this to the referring clinician and arrange it. Okay. So we need to go back. So it's a 35-year-old yeah. uh, with proptosis. The gender is not described. Okay. So I've been given axial non-contrast uh, image of the brain mm -hmm. in a 35-year-old uh, with uh, proptosis. So I'm trying to scroll this. So... <clears throat> So uh, I'm looking from below upwards where th I'm seeing the maxillary sinus, the posterior fossa. Uh, Just concentrate on the orbits. Yeah, uh, by concentrating on the orbit, I'm seeing the uh, the eyeball, the retroorbital fat, and also I'm looking at the lens, uh, the anterior and posterior chamber. Mm -hmm. the, I'm also looking at the extraocular muscles and the optic nerves. So I can see some calcification at the uh, orbital wall on lateral aspect of on the left side. And I can, that is, uh, there is a soft tissue density lesion. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is causing some destruction of the bone, I think. So I, in my official practice, I look at the bone window uh, to confirm that it's a lateral, supralateral aspect. It is expected location of uh, gland. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, can I look at the bone window, please? And the contrast. Hello. Yeah. yeah. These are post-contrast images. Oh, so these are uh, axial contrast delayed images, mm -hmm. uh, where the finding is confirmed. Uh, there is a, a soft tissue lesion with uh, aggressive features like bone destruction and all. So in the uh, so in a uh, I'm thinking it can be uh, due to uh, malignancy of the. Um, uh, you can scroll through. Okay. So, uh, so, so what are, are your differentials for this one? So it can be a primary malignancy or it can be metastasis or it can be uh, any... Which primary? Uh, I'm not getting the name, sorry. Uh, uh, what would you like to do next? <laughs> yeah, I'll do the MRI, MRI scan. Which so sequence the, you want me? Uh, you can give me, uh, uh, first I will say the T1, then contrast, then T2. So, so this uh, is the XL T1 post-contrast. Uh, XL T1 post-contrast confirm the findings of a, a, a soft tissue intensity lesion with enhancement. Mm -hmm. So what are your differentials basically? 
by which other sequence do you want? So I, can you just, uh, can I see the Excel T2? Yeah. Uh, can you please scroll it because I am I'm finding it difficult once again. Uh, okay, otherwise I'll scroll. Yeah, you can scroll. So Any other a, sequence a, you want to look at? Uh, maybe diffusion and uh, contrast, contrast images. You have looked at contrast. Contrast. I'll give you diffusion. And ADC. This is so, diffusion. Oh uh, yeah, there is a diffusion restriction there. Uh, uh, is it? Uh, let me see the uh, diffusion once again. Yeah. Okay. So uh, can you conclude your findings, please? Yeah, there is an uh, extra orbital uh, lesion at the supralateral corner of the left orbit with some mm -hmm. calcification and that is causing local destruction and mass effect and uh, yeah. that is uh, uh, causing enhancement uh, uh, post uh, administration of contrast. Yeah. So uh, uh, so I'm thinking the possibility of a destructive lesion. Uh, it can be uh, malignancy of the gland uh, or uh, primary malignancy or it can be... Which gland? Uh, Sorry, which uh, gland? Uh, that I am not getting the name uh, because there is some okay. thought block. <laughs> any, uh, any other differential? Yeah, uh, it can be meta if it is a known case of malignancy, there can be a metastasis or it can be any granulomatous infection also is a mm -hmm. possibility, but the local destruction is against that. Uh, it can have local destruction and uh, uh, these are my differentials. These are only two differentials, yeah? Hmm. So I will inform this to the referring clinician and uh, uh, refer this patient to the neurology team. Okay. So go to the next case. Okay, uh, this is a CT. Uh, Sorry. So this is your next case. Okay. A headache on the third post-operative day after lumbar spinal fusion surgery. 46-year-old okay. male. Headache on the third post-operative day after lumbar spinal fusion surgery. 45-year-old. So you can scroll. Yeah, this is an axial non-contrast uh, image of a patient after lumbar spinal fusion surgery. Uh, it's a 35 year old uh, with headache. So I'm seeing the axial non-contrast images. Uh, <coughs> so I'm trying to scroll one second. So I'm looking at below upwards, the temporal lobe, the frontal lobe, uh, the ventricles. Mm -hmm. uh, Can you go up? Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm looking at the frontal parietal lobes, the white matter, the gray matter. Can you concentrate on the frontal lobe? Okay, I'm concentrating on the frontal lobe. Uh, A bit up? Front. Pardon? A bit up. One slice. Yeah. In yeah, this I'm image. Looking, yeah, I'm looking at the brain at the region of uh, basal ganglia, the axial section images. I can see some uh, some calcification of the basal ganglia, mm -hmm. uh, the lentiform nucleus, and the ventricles appear normal. I'm looking at the third ventricle. I'm looking at the, uh, there is some air within the uh, anterior part of the frontal lobe with some hyperdensity. So okay. it's a pneumocephalus uh, with some focal hyperdensity at the uh, uh, near the frontal lobe. So that is confirmed in the bone window. So uh, it, it can be, so this cause of the headache is pneumocephalus. Uh, mm -hmm. Post, it's an iatrogenic as the patient had uh, surgery. 
So yeah. this is uh, usually uh, conservatively managed. So I'll uh, have a talk with the referring clinician and mm -hmm. the team, and it'll inform the finding. Okay. So I have been given a uh, cervical oh. spine cervical spine radiograph lateral view of a trauma patient uh, where uh, there is a, a gross uh, uh, malalignment at the anterior spinal line. So mm -hmm. uh, C5 vertebrae is anteriorly, uh, anteriorly list, uh, displaced com compared to the inferior. And there is also um, uh, the facet joints, there is a lock of the facet joints. So I'm suspecting a bilateral facet joke here, lock here. And I, I can also see there is some uh, uh, abnormality of the vertebral body itself uh, at the C3, C4, and all. So, is it uh, a bilateral or? Uh, yeah, actually, there is some more than 25% uh, anterior uh, dislocation mm -hmm. of vertebral body, and mm -hmm. the facet joint is uh, uh, malalignment. So, uh, we have to think the possibility of a bilateral in this case, uh, since there is a um, gross anterior dislocation. So, uh, uh, what would you do next? So Just this is an emergency. This is an emergency. Yeah, I, I can I can look at the other image, other X-rays like extension and flexion. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is an emergency. I'll inform this to the ED team, and we'll um, arrange uh, for a reduction of this facet joint. And also, if this patient is stable, we can do a CT for the for confirmation. But uh, the main aim should be the stabilization. So I have been given a, a CT of the cervical spine uh, in sagittal view. It's a bone window. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm look, looking for... Uh, so the, I'm looking at the vertebral body heights and uh, there is some anterior vertebral body height reduction at uh, C6 and uh, uh, I'm put the, sorry. Sorry to interrupt, but we'll have to summarize, huh? Because it's 15 minutes. Yeah, I think this after post reduction, uh, there is, I'm looking at the facet joint alignment here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, so we can stop here. Okay, so Dr. S uh, Dr. Sanish, that was very good. So, uh, if we. Uh, that was not very good, I know. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, uh, but uh, once you are in the hot seat, you know, uh, these, this is always difficult, you know. Uh, but uh, you picked up the findings, and this is, uh, I mean, uh, this is basically a unilateral uh, facet log. And mm -hmm. uh, because uh, what this uh, describe it, like if it is greater than 25%, then uh, it is uh, probably 20, 25 to 50% thesis is considered bilateral. So uh, as we can uh, see so, there is... Uh, uh, more than 25, 50 percentage, you have to consider bilateral. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, but it is up okay. to up to 25. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so okay. this is some, uh, as we can see, there is a perching of this facet as well. And hmm. yes, yeah, you described and we can uh, probably demonstrate it on... And the other finding uh, is basically C2 and C3 uh, vertebral body fusion, uh, which is an incidental finding. So, and then next case. Yeah, this you are very kind enough to show me the finding. After. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I mean, otherwise uh, it, it uh, I mean, basically, um, but you pick, you did uh, pick up the finding very, very uh, swiftly and you described it uh, correctly. And the, you mentioned that there is nothing else uh, in rest of the pain, and I mind, yeah. So these were iatrogenic related to recent uh, lumbar puncture or lumbar surgery. 
and uh, so this uh, can you describe this sign or you i did not show you this one yeah that is some uh, mount fuji sign or something uh, yeah mount fuji some, sign basically mount fuji sign. so this is yes. a, a ten tension pneumocephalus tension pneumocephalus yes exactly yeah, yeah. so So for proptosis, for this one, you uh, were a bit struggling for this one, basically. Uh, but you mentioned uh, correctly, uh, and you uh, uh, you described the finding, but uh, uh, you uh, just could not basically uh, name it. So uh, as we can see in the bone window, uh, and this is involving the uh, suprolateral aspect of left uh, orbit and there is uh, some bone canal uh, sorry some bony expansion is there and I don't see uh, there is some bony cortical thinning as well so I think it's a long-standing process like uh, you described some uh, malignancy but uh, basically, uh, I mean, that the it was a case of epidermide cyst. So uh, these can uh, so a, a diffusion and uh, diffusion restriction is the main thing which you can identify. And uh, on this on this one, there is some uh, diffusion restriction, but not typical as we see. In, in these cases, but uh, in the differential may include uh, arachnoid cyst and dermite and yeah. Okay, thank you. And this case you, yeah, you uh, described the findings and uh, this case was fine, yeah nothing else to mention in this one yeah so you were good thank you yeah thank you thank you thank you very much dr sanij and dr uh, asad uh, we are yeah. seeing great cases up till now thank you all the volunteers uh, next up is dr maha um, and the volunteer hot seat would be dr manu somebody yes. yeah Somebody is asking last case diagnosis. Uh, which last case? The one which you are showing right now, I guess. This is the yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's the venous sinus uh, yes, thrombosis. Yes, venous sinus thrombosis, exactly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So yeah. uh, Dr. Asad, if you would be kind enough to stop the sharing, then Dr. Maha can share her playlist okay, and we second. can carry on, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Asad. And thank you, yeah. Dr. Sanij. Thank you so much. Okay, good evening, everyone. It's, uh, I think it's Dr. Manu with me. Uh, yes, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, good evening to everyone. Yes, so this is your first case. <clears throat> is it scrollable? Yes, sure. Shall I scroll or shall I give you the uh, remote control? Uh, you give me the remote control. If it's not working, okay. then you can scroll for me. Uh, just let me remember how to give you the remote. Go to uh, view options. Yes. I have requested for remote. Yes, sure. That's great. Even better. Okay. Okay. So uh, these are uh, plain axle uh, CT sections uh, of uh, uh, of the neck, uh, which shows a. Uh, uh, soft tissue density uh, lesion involving the uh, left side of uh, neck uh, with uh, some calcification with it. This is possibly arising from the uh, I'm trying to locate the subarabular gland. It's uh, so is scrolling easy with you or? I think you can scroll for me. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, 
Yes, I'm not able to uh, see the subandibular gland separately. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would, uh, uh, I would uh, look at the contrast images uh, to uh, uh, localize the lesion. Mm -hmm. So this is an avid, avidly enhancing lesion in the uh, left side of uh, neck. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, and it's occupying the carotid triangle. I, the vessels are passing. Uh, vessels are being played by the lesion. Uh, so it, I mean, yes. it's intensely enhancing lesion. I would be thinking in terms of a, a paraganglioma, mm -hmm. a carotid body tumor. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, the, uh, for further confirmation, I would be doing a, a MR study. Yes. Any other things that you can find related to the lesion? Uh, 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 there is a uh, mass effect on the uh, airway. Mm -hmm. the yes. Of, uh, yes. So this is an emergency at a point. You have to secure the airway, right? Yes. So uh, how would you wrap up okay. the case, please? So uh, this is a case of left-sided carotid body tumor with uh, with uh, mass effect on the uh, air passage, and the patient would require uh, emergency uh, a secure, securing of the airway. And uh, mm -hmm. after the patient has been stabilized, the uh, case can be taken up for MR study for confirmation. I would uh, convey the findings to the referring clinician. Okay, so would you have any other differentials for such a case? Uh, Differentials would be an aneurysm, but uh, this is heterogeneously mm -hmm. enhancing. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, okay, so let's okay. move on. So. This is your next case. And this is a neurosonogram of a, a newborn baby which shows a dilated uh, ventricles. There is uh, hyperechoic uh, areas noted within the ventricles. This is uh, suspicious for uh, germal matrix uh, hemorrhage. I would uh, take the history of the patient to know whether the patient is a newborn or has had any distress uh, during the uh, labor. Uh, so you mentioned it's suspicious. So is, is it suspicious or is it diagnostic? Uh, this is uh, this can be taken as a diagnostic. There is no need for any further uh, further investigation. Mm -hmm. So this is a complicated mm -hmm. case. So of, can you uh, grade this type MRI. of? This is a grade four. Yes, which grade? Type of, uh, uh, I'm not yes, able to why? name. The, it has resulted in hydrocephalus and. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is hemorrhage into the uh, yes. basal, basal ganglia. Okay, it has a specific yeah. name where this hemorrhage usually starts. Can you recall it? Uh, it's a germinal matrix hemorrhage. Uh, yes. Yes, usually starts at a specific area here in the brain. At the, at the, in the caudothalamic groove. Caudothalamic groove, yes. So what's your management in such a case? Uh, uh, supportive management has to be given uh, to, uh, to the baby and the patient has to be uh, admitted in the mm -hmm. in unit, uh, intensive care unit with uh, complete support. Uh, yes. So given that the so, patient so, is having hydrocephalus, would you... Um, uh, the tension has to be uh, released yes. using a ventricular peritoneal shunt. Yes, exactly. So this is your first um, uh, concern. And then later on the resuscitation or whatever he might be needing to be referred to the pediatrician, okay? So, or neonatologist. So your next case. This is a selected axils section of the uh, mastoid region uh, on the right side, which shows uh, 
of this of this of the master vessels and uh, uh, so can you point out the opacification you're talking about uh, these are the opacification within the master vessels uh, you mean here here yes you can you can take the mouse Yeah, I'm going from about mm -hmm. downwards. The uh, internal acoustic meters appears normal. The middle layer and the middle layer obstacles appear normal. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the you do have a coronal uh, window as well. And the, um, external artery meters uh, as well as artery canal uh, appears to be beaten. There is uh, a, a communication between the external artery canal and, and the uh, mastoid vessels. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is so along this... which anatomical site or structure? So uh, this there is a defect along the uh, roof of the external rotary canal, which has resulted in a communication between the uh, mastoid uh, ASLs and the rotary canal. Uh, so, um, Can you show me the defect yeah. again? Uh, this is the defect. This has. Uh, uh, expose the uh, lateral uh, semicircular canal mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the ex uh, to the exterior. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, this pro probably uh, uh, um, uh, a con uh, congenital defect, or um, I would also ask the history of a trauma. Or an iatrogenic procedure. So, mm -hmm. this patient is. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like to know the history of the patient and uh, how the. Yes. Uh, the finding will be con conveyed to the referring clinician. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware of any. You know, I cannot recollect the exact terminology of this. Uh, Norm, exact nomenclature of the defect. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. We'll just come back to this case again. It's a bit tough. Okay. So this, this is, is your next case. Uh, this is a plain axial ZT section of a head which shows a, a globular hypertense radiopacity uh, along the right uh, sibilant fissure. Yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, hypertense, and I am uh, suspecting uh, a case of uh, aneurysm. I would uh, do a contrast study of the brain or an MRI to uh, confirm my diagnosis. Uh, my other. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you have any other differentials? Uh, there. Uh, Uh, other differentials would include uh, this is a yes it's a 55 year old patient with headache just recurrent attacks of headache uh, other differentials would be uh, uh, intracerebral bleed itself or uh, uh, if i would also look at the uh, coronal sections to know whether it is uh, uh, based uh, to yes. on the dura uh, mm -hmm. So, my so can you just describe the be... lesion? It's 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 hyperdense as you mentioned. Any so surrounding global hyperdense lesion with mm -hmm. surrounding uh, hypodensity in the uh, right uh, temporal lobe. So uh, okay. differentials. So be... you're suspecting either an intraaxial or an extraaxial lesion, based on the CT. Based, uh, uh, I'm. 
I'm trying to look for a CSF uh, and the, the gray matter as mm -hmm. well as the CSF uh, cleft. Uh, in mm -hmm. my usual practice, I'd be uh, looking at the, all the um, uh, multiplanar formats to uh, mm -hmm. uh, know the exact location. Uh, so at, at this point, at you're this actually point, suspecting either it's, yes, an intraaxial lesion I, I'm, I'm, or I'm an extraaxial. You can't. Mm -hmm. I am suspecting an yes. extraaxial lesion at this point. Okay. So this basic uh, uh, for an MRI. I don't we don't have actually a contour CT. Okay, so these are axial uh, T1 sections of the mm -hmm. uh, MR study of brain, which shows uh, a heterogeneously appearing lesion with uh, hyperdense T1 signals within. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can have the T2s. You need the T2. Your T2 images show a uh, uh, trans lesion with uh, mm -hmm. uh, hyper and hypertense areas within. Oh. Mm -hmm. the, this is the fair. So. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this is diffusion. diffusion. Diffusion images show a peripheral or diffusion restriction. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's yeah, the I'll diffusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is. So, what do you think now? Okay. So the, uh, this is uh, a trans mm -hmm. enhancing lesion. There is. Yes. I am trying to look at the relation with the uh, uh, middle cerebral artery as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, after analyzing the. Uh, MR images, I'm thinking in terms of uh, uh, space of being lesion in the mm -hmm. uh, uh, right temporal lobe uh, with, yes. uh, 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 with the hyperdense uh, signals in the uh, T1 weighted images and yes, uh, yes. and uh, hyper intense and hyper density on CT. So, how would you summarize it in a 55 year old male patient? So this is a lesion which uh, uh, with hemorrhage within uh, the T1 hyperindense areas are showing uh, diffusion restriction as well. So it could be... Uh, Dr. Maha and Dr. Manu, sorry to interrupt, but just let's sum up the case, Dr. Manu, so we can proceed to the mm -hmm. feedback. So, uh, one differential diagnosis would be a, a malignant melanoma. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, second yes. question would be a, so let's a high grade glioma. Yes. High grade glioma with us. Okay. Okay. Great. Your next case. Uh, Dr. Maha, 15 minutes are up. So mm -hmm. it's time for feedback now. Really? So fast? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So this case, so basically the, the one that we have revised, uh, the last one. This was a case of malignant melanoma metastasis, okay? So in this case, basically you have to mention that in the CT, it's um, a hyperdense lesion. You can at this point uh, just say it might be an extra axial, an extra axial lesion could be an aneurysm, could be a, um, um, any extra axial a meningioma, whatever. However, it could be also an intraaxial lesion. For example, it could be a metastasis or a primary hemorrhagic neoplasm. And then you move on to the, uh, the um, DMR, and you see the high signal on the T1 weighted images and the intense enhancement and being an intraaxial lesion. So it's likely to be either a primary hemorrhagic uh, tumor or it's a 
uh, melanoma metastasis. In this case, it was histologically proven to be a melanoma metastasis, okay? So this was the last case. The one before, it's a bit tough, but however, if you do know the, the, the anatomy in this area, maybe it's much more easier here. You know, this, this is the stylomastoid foramen, okay? And the stylomastoid okay. foramen, it, it harbors the, uh, the, the, the styloid portion of the facial nerve, okay? Or we sometimes call it the vertical portion. Oh. So this is a lesion, which is soft tissue density, and it's eroding, eroding the surrounding bone, okay? So wow. that was the case of facial nerve uh, schwannoma. Okay, so just knowing the anatomy and this part, I know you kept saying that there is a hyperdensity or there's something like a pacification of the mastoids, but however, mm -hmm. the rest of the mastoid looks just really good. Right, okay? right. So mm. just put it in mind because even though it's a bit rare, but however, you can still uh, uh, catch it just by detecting the proper anatomical site. Okay. So what's the most common site for a facial nerve uh, um, a schwannoma? Actually, it's not this portion. It's usually within the geniculate ganglion. So you would check the V-shaped area. Okay, which is close to the masto, which is close to the uh, here in this part. But the cuts here are taken a bit wide. This is the tympanic portion of the facial nerve. And then one cut behind, you can see the, but it's not seen here, the genu at the level of the middle ear, okay? So you can see the genu. This is the most common area where you can see a uh, facial nerve schwannoma. However, in this case, it was at the region of the stylomastoid uh, canal, okay? Usually these patients, they can go for resection, debulking, radiosurgery, whatever you refer the patient to, uh, the head and neck or the skull-based surgeon, okay? So this was a rather direct case, and you, I, I think you've explained it well. Just check the cotothalamic groove for the presence of any hemorrhage. And since this patient is having associated dilated ventricular system, however, there is no evidence of interventricular hemorrhage. So this is a grade three geomonometric hemorrhage, okay? So the point is, I have to first just decompress the hydrocephalus, and then I think about anything else, okay? Uh, your first case, yes. So this case had multiple findings, okay. Um, first thing on the non-contra study, you can see that there is a huge lesion, which is more or less well-defined. It has an area of calcification, which is noted medially. And you can see also that on the non-contrast, maybe it's more obvious the presence of the, uh, the, hemi, the hemi tongue on this area on the, uh, on the left side appears to be uh, fatty replaced, mm. okay? So there's fiber fatty replacement of part of the tongue. The most important thing is that whenever you have any neck masses, you have to check the airway. So uh, you have to mention that there is displacement of the airway, have to secure the airway and so on. And there is also associated tongue, uh, hemi-tongue uh, atrophy, okay? Associated lymphadenopathies are also noted, and this might uh, make you think that it is a malignant process rather than a benign paraganglioma, okay? The presence of calcifications also might make a paraganglioma a little bit less likely. Here, you mentioned that the vessels were passing really good through the lesion, and you can't see any invasion of the vessels. Uh, there is some enhancing lymph nodes as well. The lesion is hyper-enhancing. So that was basically the differentials were um, um, mainly the paraganglioma, as you mentioned. However, you have to mention also a malignant peripheral nerve sheath uh, tumor. And that was a malignant uh, schwannoma that is also invading the hypoglossal nerve, causing atrophy of the uh, left hemitone. Okay? Okay. So usually in these patients, they go for uh, further referring to the, uh, to the uh, surgeon. Okay? Okay. Right. okay thank you. Was the, uh, for, yes. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sabaha. Thank you. Thank you, Maha. Thank you, Dr. Manu. Thank I, you. I will, yeah. I'll stop the share. Excellent cases. Um, Dr. Lela, you are up. And Dr. Kamal, uh, you are next. Uh, we'll make the next two sessions 13 minutes to be able to complete two extra hot seat sessions, okay? Okay, just uh, let me uh, stop the share. Uh, how can I stop the share? <laughs> I always remember, forget that. In your, in your top bar, maybe? Uh, yeah, fine, great, excellent. Dr. Lela, the screen is yours. <clears throat> So this is the patient, sudden onset of headache with left side weakness and vomiting, 75-year-old female. 
So I am provided with the non-contrast CT scan axial images, which shows there is the evidence of an intraventricular hemorrhage. The blood is seen in the bilateral lateral ventricles extending within the temporal horn as well as in the third and fourth ventricle. The right ventricle is mildly dilated. Intraparenchymal hemorrhage is noted within the left, uh, sorry, right front uh, prior to temporal lobe with moderate surrounding edema and defacement of the main parenchyma. Uh, so this is the case of the intraparenchymal hemorrhage with intraventricular extension and associated mass effects. Uh, there is no evidence of an uncle and tonsil herniation in the given images. I will convey my finding to the primary team immediately about the inter, uh, about the uh, as is is it is an emergency. And further evaluation with the CT angiogram may be considered to rule out any possible underlying aneurysm which has been ruptured. Otherwise, the less other possibility would include the hypertensive bleed leading to this all scenario. Okay. So, uh, few uh, few weeks later, the patient uh, presented with reduced GCS. Okay, so this is the follow-up uh, uh, follow CT scan, which shows the resolution of the hemorrhage in the previous uh, uh, described locations. However, diffuse edematous, uh, ed edema changes are noted. Visotonic edema is noted in the bilateral cyber hemisphere. There is interval development of another hemorrhage noted in the left uh, parietal lobe in parasagittal region with surrounding edema. This appears to be the acute bleed. Subdural hemorrhage along the midline fox is noted. A resolution of the hemorrhage within the ventricles is seen. However, the blood CSF level is seen in the bilateral occipital horn, suggesting the rest of the uh, uh, blood being resoluting. So, still, I will uh, convey for my findings to the primary team. And uh, uh, considering the another uh, new onset of the hemorrhage, uh, further evaluation with CT angiogram should be considered to rule out the possible aneurysms. Mm -hmm. Any other really possibility for the, for the consecutive hemorrhages like this? Patient is having multiple hemorrhages. Uh, uh, this could be hypertensive as 75 year old patient. And this is a common indication for the hypertensive? Uh, Prior lobe is common, but this one, uh, this, uh, this in the second CT scan, the uh, is, this is relatively uncommon location, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we proceed to the next case. So this is a female patient with mental confusion and behavioral changes for six months, sixty-five to seventy-year-old female. Mm -hmm. So I am providing with the provided with the non-contrast CT brain. In this, I can see the. Uh, so, so, so there is appears to be the hypotensity within the region of the brain stem in the region of the pons. I think I, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, there are hypotensities within the brainstem in the region of the pons. Otherwise, rest of the posterior fossa is normal. The ventricles appears to be mildly dilated. I cannot see any definite hypodensity within the supratentorial region. The sylvan fissures are symmetrical. And uh, okay. no tonsillar herniation, rest of the things appears to be normal to me. Sorry, I cannot make anything right, so much so how striking. Would how would you like to proceed with this patient? Uh, I will like to go for the MRI of this patient to look for any white matter abnormality and any other uh, abnormality to confirm the findings within the brainstem, if any. Okay, okay so, oh. so there is a diffuse abnormal signal noted within the bilateral thalami, which are markedly edematous, so iso-intense on T1. 
-hmm. within tens this is uh, showing a significant hyper intense signal on the flare and t2 sequence i would like to go for the post contrast images uh, on the post contrast images there is no significant enhancement is noted within this region a nodular enhancement is noted in the posterior aspect on the left side mm -hmm. in one of the uh, so diffusely edematous bilateral thalami with the normal mr signals um, okay uh, how, the differential possibility uh, uh, differential post uh, can i have a diffusion weighted images sure. okay so no restriction in these areas mm -hmm. and the flow voids in the uh, internal cerebral veins appears to be normal and the enhancement of their them is also normal on the post contrast images so i am considering the glioma uh, my first possible uh, possible differential would include the glioma uh, in the uh, thalamic gliomas in this region uh, features are not consistent with the dst and in fox so i will refer my uh, convey my findings to the primary physician uh, if if uh, concerned for the mr spectroscopy may be considered to confirm the diagnosis okay Okay, so this patient, thirty-year-old male, present with sensory neural hearing loss. So I am providing with the provided with the non-contrast CT brain. I can see uh, an extra axial hypodensity noted in the posterior fossa in the right CP angle, causing osseous remodeling in this region with mass effect over the adjacent brainstem. and uh, uh, osseous destruction is also noted in this region uh, with uh, mass effect and compression of the fourth ventricle however no definite uh, no significant upstream hydrocephalus is noted uh, uh, findings are highly concerning for extra axial uh, lesion in this region most could be schwannoma and uh, i will like to do the i would like to see the bone window uh, for the detailed Okay, so on the bone window, I, yeah, there is an osseous remodeling with this lesion extending in the region of. Okay, so there is a uh, widening of the carotid uh, jugular foramen in this region as well. I think, however, the internal uh, auditory canal and internal. Ear structures are grossly normal, and the vascular ear cells are normally pacified. <coughs> okay. So, so uh, I okay. uh, I would like to uh, uh, advise the MRI to the patient for the further detailed evaluation and uh, to characterize the lesion. Okay. Okay. So on MRI, this is high. Fiesta sequence, which shows the hypo intense lesion in the extra axial location as described, which is extending within the internal acoustic meatus, as well. So uh, I would like to go for the post contrast images. So intense post contrast enhancement is noted within the lesion, which is heterogeneous, with few areas of necrosis. So uh, findings are suggestive of. Uh, consistent with with uh, acoustic neuroma mm -hmm. and any other differential for the acoustic neuroma the cone appearance is uh, quite obvious for this so no differential mm -hmm. in this in this case mm -hmm. so this is young man presented with an altered conscious level the initial concern of neurological infection 40 year old male so non contrast city brain shows uh, hypodensities in the right parietal periventricular region in the uh, body of the body and genome of the corpus callosum okay. 
and uh, with minimal associated mass effect rest of the brain parenchyma appears to be normal and mm-hmm. so findings are concerning for could be highly uh, con- could be of the ischemic etiology in the aca territory uh, however the possibility of uh, cerebritis and cephalitis cannot uh, i would like to go for the mri to de- further delineate the findings for the okay. how would mri help uh, i would like to go for diffusion whether there is infect kind of restriction or not so there is marked uh, restricted diffusion uh, i will also confirm on the adc but the dwi hyper intense signal is suggesting restriction within the described abnormal mr signals abnormal hyper density in the city brain uh, so findings are suggestive of uh, Uh, ACA in Fox and few in Fox in the right MCA territory as well. Okay. So, uh, considering the multiple arterial territories, this could be related to the embolic phenomena, and uh, cardiac evaluation of the patient should be considered. And I would like to further confirm the MRA as to see. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh... single inches okay so i cannot see the right, left internal uh, carotid artery and it's uh, flow related signal on the map images and few uh, uh, the collaterals are filling the contralateral uh, the mca is filling through the contralateral vessels through the collaterals so this is of uh, complete uh, left ica thrombosis i will convey mm-hmm. my findings immediately to the referring team uh, to the primary physician and the neurosurgical team as it is a surgical image uh, to for the for the for the management of the patient okay but uh, this is the left ica correct the infarctions were on which side infarction is involving the both uh, aca's territory and and the right mca territory so could this be explained by this um, left ica ah uh, uh, dr dela dr kamal uh, you will have to sum up circle of willis so, uh, collateral vessels are filling up the could be so the flow compromise on the right side could be due to the blood mm-hmm. steel phenomena something okay. like that okay that's good enough uh, so to some of the cases uh, i you described them perfectly right to good connect so this patient uh, had embolic um, infarcts on the ac ac territory and the right uh, ac territory and given that the patient is young age we should check the cardiac function Uh, this was another uh, incident of finding that the left IC is not uh, so uh, thrombosed and completely stenotic, as well as the both I- ACE are not seen. Okay. Okay. For the previous case, so since we are hearing this, this is perfectly right. The uh, uh, right acoustic shown, although it looks very aggressive, but you have mentioned correctly. the remodeling of the bone which is suspected that the lesion is slowly growing which is against a malignant lesion it's a slowly growing at the benign resolution okay uh this patient with confusion and um yeah i missed totally on the CT deep- scan yes it's it's of course difficult i missed it myself but it is a bisarmic lesion very well and i described And this patient, you were right about describing the description of the hemorrhage, but hemorrhage in the peripheral, such a peripheral location, and in an elderly patient, we should also uh, think of um, 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 amyloid uh, angiopathy, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, because it comes in this peripheral location. 
hypertensive okay. is usually coming in the deep basal ganglia and the cerebellum. So, and uh, co um, having it recurrent again within a few weeks of the first one and also in a peripheral location, it's uh, pointing to the uh, cerebral amyloid and as well. Okay, okay. okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Dr. Kamal. Thank you very much, Dr. Leila okay. and Dr. Kamal. Okay, everybody has, you know, shared such excellent cases. So uh, this might all look straightforward. Dr. Uh, Leila, your time starts now and I need the buzzwords. Okay. So increasing his circumference in a two-year-old male. You want to scroll or should I scroll? No, you can scroll, it's okay. Okay. Um, so this is an MR study of a two-year-old um, child and it's revealing a enlarged cyst, uh, posterior fossa with a large sizable cystic region that's communicating with the four sperm chicken. Hi, Laila, um, can you please uh, speak a bit louder or uh, keep your micro sure. microphone near you? Okay, uh, so there is a large sizable cystic region seen occupying most of the posterior fossa and it's causing widening of the posterior fossa. It's communicating with the forced ventricle and leading to uh, hydrocephalic changes as well. Uh, these features are uh, very uh, typical for uh, dantibocal malformation. Okay. Uh, for that, I will convey the information to the referring physician. Uh, this child is probably also mentally resolved as well. Okay, some other terminologies you would like to use in describing this entity? Um, some other changes or features here? The elongation of the brain stem as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, high arching, uh, the arching, the high, the elevation of the vermis as well. Uh, elevation of the? the? Vermis and the tentorium, and they are also arching. High, okay, high arching. what you mean is torcular? Okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, okay, so you have mentioned the hydrocephalus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, just keep this image in mind. Okay. Okay. Now look at this image. Any change? Um, I think maybe there is now increased flow across the floor of the third ventricle. Then maybe they have done some fenestrotomy. Good, uh, good, there is excellent. This flow artifact is coming here. Yes, uh, just keep your mic just exactly at the place where you have kept now. We can hear you very okay. clearly. Okay, you have given mm -hmm. us the diagnosis of Dandy Walker malformation. Fair enough. Uh, irrespective of this case, if you see a posterior fossa CSF collection, what uh, what differentials do you keep in your mind? A cisterna magna, um, okay. a Dandy Walker malformation, a rhombencephalic cysts. Okay, sure great. This one, I think okay, next case. Headache and intractable vomiting, 14 year old male. So, this is an MR study of a 14 year old male uh, showing hydrocephalic changes. Um, fourth ventricle is within normal limits. There seems to be a mass lesion seen centered on the tectum of the big brain. I'd like to see the contrast, please. Contrast which one? Coronal, sagittal, T, axial? Uh, sagittal. Okay, so this confirms the presence of a mass lesion that is centered upon the tectum of the uh, brain, uh, midbrain, sorry, and it's uh, extending to the uh, causing mass effect upon the upper cerebellum as well as on the splenium of the corpus callosum. Uh, differential diagnosis for lesions um, in this location. I could be extra axial, uh, suggesting a pineal gland lesion, mm -hmm. uh, which is. Uh, Hello? Uh, Lala, I can't hear you. Is it with me only? In that age, I would be okay. uh, thankful for a journey. Okay. Lala, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm missing you in between. I lose you in between. Uh, you, I, I heard the pineal region mass. Can you please okay. continue from there? So if this is a pineal uh, region, uh, then it, uh, I'm really doubtful that this is a germ cell tumor. So a pineal germinoma is most likely. Um, an intraaxial lesion would be this likely, but it could be a uh, tectal glioma as well. Okay, um, uh, this is a contrast enhanced. 
Am I right? Mm -hmm. okay. You can see the enhancement here, right? I yes. want to. I want you to see if you can find any other area of enhancement in this image. Um, in this image. It's okay. Fair enough. Okay, I'm scrolling through the through the axial, just for you to see if you can see any other areas of enhancement. If you can yes, stop here. me. Yes, if, here and the and the region of the um, uh, in relation to the right lateral ventricle. Okay. Uh, and there's also one in the right salvian tissue. Uh, right sylvian fissure um, not very sure about it but okay frontal horn of lateral ventricles okay um, is there something else which can help you in narrowing down the differentials what i understand you gave me tectile plate you gave me pineal region in pineal yes. region uh, did you give me any specific diagnosis or just pineal Germinoma. region Germinoma Germinoma. Would be the most okay likely. okay mm -hmm. i'm giving you a ct does this help and what what is what, uh, what do you see here Okay. In the CT, they have already inserted a, um, uh, a VP shunt for the, for, the, for the relief of the hydrocephalus and this lesion, I think it maybe had enlarged in size. Um, it is also hyperdense on CT, mm -hmm. uh, although this is a non-contrast study, suggesting that this lesion is hypercellular. So, and there's also a small focus of pneumocyphus, which is probably related to the uh, uh, that would say uh, the operative intervention. The calcifications are also um, expanded. Mm -hmm. So these confirm that this is a pineal germinoma. Any other differential other than pineal germinoma? You 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 use the or can you use some adjective or word to describe the calcification here, the pattern here? We call it an exploded. Uh, exploded. Uh, Excellent. Yes. Exploded. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, any other differential other than germinoma? Germinoma is a valid differential in the pineal region mass, I agree. Yes. But uh, mm -hmm. something else? Pineal, pineal uh, body tube pineoblastoma. Excellent, okay. Your next case. Okay, so this is an MR study of a young uh, baby and it is uh, uh, for the entire new access to the weighted sequences and it's showing a uh, cystic lesion that is seen uh, bulging from the uh, neural defect of the posterior neural arches of the lower lumbar spine, suggestive of uh, meningocele. By looking upwards to the... Uh, you use the word uh, meningocele? Meningocele, yes. Meningocele, okay. No, it's myelo as well because nerve roots are seen yes. in the lesion. Yes, okay. Fair enough. Okay. By looking at the uh, uh, cranial cervical junction, I'm looking for any herniation of the cerebellar process, which is also seen, so confirming that this is an amarcari uh, malformation type 2. Okay, I, I understand you said there is cerebellar tonsillar herniation. Any other mm -hmm. features which you see in Arnold Carey? Any other terminologies which you would like to use here? The small, the small posterior fossa, the yes. uh, indentation of the uh, uh, brain stem. Okay. Um, the hydrocephalic changes. Yes. Um, um, I know uh, I do not have any T1 for you, but can no. you um, have a hint of another um, feature here related to the Arnold Chiari? Okay, it's okay. What, what next? What next? So the child has to be referred for the um, neurosurgery for re relief of the hydrocephalus and also uh, for possible correction of the meningitis. Okay. Your next case. Two weeks of headache, blurred vision, 20 year old. So, this is a non enhanced CT scan of the brain of a 20 years old male, and it is showing a, a space occupying lesion in the left cerebellar hemisphere. Uh -huh. and most of it reveals a cystic component, not just the component. However, I will convey, uh, I will uh, check for the solid components on a contrast. Uh, exactly, scan. that's good. I will give you the next phase when you ask for it. Okay. So you said you want contrast enhanced. Here's your contrast enhanced. Good, okay. go ahead. Okay, fine. 
So this, this the region confirms the presence of a small solid uh, module within the the, uh, the large cyst. The cyst wall itself is not enhancing. Mm -hmm. So this appearance is uh, suggestive of a uh, what's the grade one uh, tumor, which is the pilocytic astrocytoma. Um, what the else can be the differential? It could be a human hematoblastoma as well. Mm -hmm. But I would expect it to be more intensely enhancing than this. Uh, what is this? Yeah, this is the solid module that is. Yeah. Enhancing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If considering hemangioblastoma, your next next step. My next step would be the examination of the entire neuraxis as well as the screening of the uh, uh, abdomen for other changes uh, in the abdomen. Also, uh, screening of family members. Why? What are you? What is the diagnosis you are suspecting? Because it's a von Hippel-Landau syndrome, which is also okay. dominant. Good. So, what are the um, changes you are expecting in the abdomen? Um, bilateral renal cyst carcinomas, bilateral renal cysts, uh, pancreatic cysts. Mm -hmm. Okay. The ultrasound abdomen was done for this patient. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somehow, or other at the time when they went for the excision, it was normal, and this was a hemangioblastoma, as you said. Okay, mm -hmm. but this patient had flushing and tachycardia. Six months back, or six months later, he comes with flushing and tachycardia. Considering the symptoms, what will you suspect? Flushing and tachycardia. Uh, either the patient could be having some hemorrhage, for example. No hemorrhage. Or, um, hemocytoma, maybe. Okay, I give you an MRI abdomen. So you are suspecting an adrenal lesion. Yes. Tell me which phase do you want me to scroll? No, you won't give me given direct contrast directly in exams. Okay, so out of phase then. Out of phase directly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here the is your out of phase. Bilateral ulcerative renal mass lesions. Um, there is some loss of fat signal. How do you know? Did you see in phase? No. <laughs> then, so you will first ask for the in phase, right? Okay. So this is your in phase. Uh -huh. What do you see in in phase? No, no difference in uh, signal intensity between both the in phase and out of phase. Okay. Uh, what uh, is the finding on the in phase MRI bilateral. abdomen? Here? Bilateral Excellent. Bilateral Excellent. Bilateral Excellent. Bilateral so you saw bilateral adrenal masses, and there is no dropout of signal, right? Yes. Okay. What is the next phase you need? Contrasts. Okay. Here you go, the contrast. So they are intensely enhancing. Uh, there is a focal necrosis in the left suprarenal mass. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, um, given that the patient has a hemangioblastoma, I will be doubtful that this, these are free chromocytomas. Okay. The, uh, the clinician is thinking, why not carcinoma? How will you convince them? Because it's necrotic, you know, he's yes. arguing with you. What can you do next to convince him? Uh, I will do an octreotide scan. Okay, octreotide is not, the nuclear medicine says there is no octreotide uh, available, out of octreotide. What will you do? Then I will suggest that he does the uh, vanillyl mandelic acid in urine. Good, uh, that is a good way. But uh, uh, they want nuclear medicine. The clinician is not convinced. Uh, the timer. Yeah, yeah, it's up. Yes, Dr. Uh, uh, Leila. Do that do that the, okay, let me uh, just as uh, yes, Dr. You, all your all your um, um, suggestions were valid, but uh -huh. here we did the MIBG scan. So, what do you see in the MIBG scan? Uh, so, in the MIBG and the um, uh, twenty-four on the, and four hours and twenty-four hours, there is an increased uptake on both sides of the spinal uh, door on the uh, lumbar spine, upper lumbar spine, more on the uh, left sides. Okay. Which corresponds to the enlarged gland. Very good. Very good. Very well done, Dr. Uh, um, Lela. I'll come back to the summaries. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it was a rushed up hot seat session, but you did well. What I wanted, uh, what I want all of us to do is to ask the candidate which phase he needs. Okay. And then scroll the sequences because in the real exams, you know, the radiopedia gives us all the sequences, but in the real exams, we'll either get T2 or T1 and we'll have to earn our next phase, right? We'll have to earn our next sequence. You did well here. You told that this is out of phase. The reason I teased you here 
because in the real exam and in real life again we'll see in phase and then out of phase right so you correct uh, we can't hear you you can't hear me uh, i can uh, 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 is Hello? that so um uh, can you hear me uh lala i can hear you very well we can hear you okay 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 dr sanij uh, everybody can hear me uh, maybe uh, some problem it would be fine so anyways this was pheochromocytoma um, uh, what i like about uh, you know there 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 are lots of things which come with hippel and i like this um, mnemonic of uh, uh, radiopedia hippel hemangioblastoma increased risk of rcc pheochromocytoma pancreatic eye dysfunction and liver renal and pancreatic cysts because as you remember dr uh, curtis session he was saying as you said that the 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 six um, the candidate scoring six would give the findings the candidate scoring seven and eight will give the next step so that is what you did very well done this mm -hmm. was a straightforward case you picked it well this was a myelomeningocele the reason I, I i emphasized on it because we have to look for the nerves coming out when the cases are simple and direct remember the examiner is going to pick on each and every word and he would like to hear all the buzzwords this would keep the examiner calm and you know, uh, for him to go, session go smoothly. So yes, you rightly said myelomeningocele. This is a small posterior fossa. There is cerebellar herniation. There is narrowing at the foramen magnum. There is towering of the cerebellum. Um, um, there is a, a sort of prominent um, um, a ventricle. Um, I don't know if I can convince you, but I feel the corpus, this is T2, but the corpus callosum, at least uh, either hyper agenesis is also here, which is the, um, mm. which is the association. So well done here. I'm sorry. This is headache and intractable vomiting. Um, I, I, I intentionally gave you the MRI first to uh, make it a bit more challenging. And um, all your differentials were valid. Whenever we have the pineal region mass, we go for the pineal blastoma and pineal cytoma, whatever. Germinoma is also valid differential. And as you said, we should also keep a tectal plate glioma here. Um, all are valid. What I wanted to pick you uh, pick up here is, see, this was actually a pineoblastoma as we saw on the CT. We have to see whether there is, you know, dissemination. If you, if I can convince you, there is this um, enhancement here in the in the in these uh, CSF cisterns, and mm -hmm. as you correctly picked up here, there is um, enhancement, ependymal enhancement in the floor of the. Uh, in the anterior horn, frontal horn of the lat right lateral ventricle. So these things will 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 have the points. Once you are given a direct case of exploded pattern of pineoblastoma, they would like you to pick up and comment on each and everything and give the buzzwords. But very well mm -hmm. done. Next, we come to the Dandy Walker malformation. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think this is a very valid um, uh, terminology. The elevation elevation of torcular, or maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Or, and the inversion of the torcular lambdoid inversion, you know, because this, uh, this mm -hmm. torcular, the stentorium goes up. So it's uh, 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 the mm -hmm. terminology yeah, is yeah, used as lambdoid torcular inversion. Um, and as you said, enlarged posterior fossa. Now, what was happening here, if you can see, the recesses of the third ventricle are very nicely shown here, right? The pineal mm -hmm. recess, the infundibular, the supra optic recess. And you correctly pointed out here that fenestration has been done. You see, these are vessels. These blacks are vessels. This is fenestration. So a fenestration had, has been done in this patient. Here they're showing um, the various recesses. And this is the um, uh, fenestrated mm -hmm. uh, third ventricle, which has been done. So overall, mm -hmm. very, uh, it was a very well done meeting. Thank you so much to Thank all the so volunteers. Much. Just uh, for all the volunteers and for uh, whether they are hot seats or participants, um, examiners, we should try to uh, make the uh, hot seat candidate earn his next um, um, next comment, you know, um, next sequence. And when you 